Am I? I am all set? Okay. Uh... <laughs> Alright, I'll just... Pretty much set up to get started. And... You can give me the word... On... When I'm good to go. Aw, oh, man! Did that echo? I can wait for that. If that is on my end, that might actually be on my end. Okay. <laughs> then I am just gonna get started. Uh, this game is a little hard to follow, but I'll do my best to explain. Uh, so if someone is ready on timer, then I'll give a countdown. Uh, five, four, three, two, one, go. Alright, so this is soft body. The basic idea of this game is controlling two things at once. So you have these two little worm things. You have a yellow one and a red one. The yellow one is your main body. And the red one is your ghost body. And they each do different things. It's kind of shown off in this level. Your yellow body activates blocks and kills certain enemies, and your red body, it pushes these orbs along their paths, and it kills most of the enemies. So, yeah, the idea is you control one of them with each hand. In a soft mode, it's a little, a little simplified. You can basically merge together and control them both at the same time. In the harder game modes, you have to. Oops. In the harder game modes, you have to deal with both of them entirely independently, and they can both die. Whereas in this one, only your main body can die. This is somewhat of a longer level, so whoops. But yeah, you just have to accomplish various tasks within each of the levels. You have to light up these blocks with your main body. You have to not get shot by these turret things. And push orbs along paths. It's all really satisfying. The idea, the goal behind the design of the game is to be kind of meditative. And I think it accomplishes that. It can get a little hectic in the later stages, but as long as you relax and just really think about what you're doing, you'll make it through. And all these stages in Chapter 1 are kind of introductory. They introduce the different mechanics. Like right here we have these sniper things. Here we have more lighting up blocks and pushing orbs along paths. And more turrets. Get used to these. They're pretty prevalent throughout the whole game. Almost ran straight into that bullet. Alright. There's something really cool you can do here. I almost got it. You can play that safe and like come up one side and go down the other, or you can do it all at the same time. So that's the first example of one of those spiral things, and it's similar to the orbs that you have to push, but when you're pushing it, it constantly spews out bullets at you, so you really have to focus on it, otherwise you'll just get hit. Alright, so here we demonstrate the fact that the ghost can go through walls, but your main body can't go through walls. So you have to separate there in order to get the spiral. And now we have one of these slow turrets that just constantly streams out bullets, basically like a wall. You can't really get through unless it gets to the very edge of the screen, and by then... You're probably doing something wrong if you get to that point. <laughs> Now we have another orb. But by now you get the basic idea. When you're merged together, the game gets much easier to control. And fortunately you can also run into enemies that would kill you, and you just defeat them because you have your ghost on you. Uh, there are certain turrets that only... Oops. There are certain turrets that only shoot if you're within a certain range of them. This is the first example of that. So whenever you approach this guy, he'll shoot five bullets at you. Kind of 
to go through this level, light everything up. And... There we go. Oops. Chapter 1 is actually fairly long. Here we have these kind of black orbs that move around, and whenever they hit something, they spawn bullets. It's actually a little rougher than most patterns I've seen. Uh, one thing I'm doing, you can hold the right shoulder button and actually slow your movement so you can move really precise through like dense bullet clouds, which is pretty convenient and necessary a lot of the time. <laughs> So now this one's fun. These bullets stay on the screen for forever. And you just kind of have to maneuver. And these guys move at the perfect angle with this line to really mess you up a lot of the time. <laughs> right. Now certain levels, like this one, you actually don't have your ghost at all. There's nothing to do with him, so you just have to keep the level without him. There you go. Alright. Now these squares I want to talk about for a bit, because they have this outer shell thing. You have to take out the four pieces with your main body, and then they have that inner shell. I actually just found out when I was getting ready for the marathon today that if you just leave the inner part alone, it'll start shooting bullets really, really quickly, but it'll actually just defeat itself. It'll disappear after it shoots like five times. So eventually I will try and route that into bigger levels like this one. This is actually the first boss level in the game, which we'll see after I get rid of this preliminary stuff. Oof. So yeah, whenever you have a like spiral next to these snipers, that can be pretty rough. But we got through it. I'm just taking this extra safe. Alright, so here's the first boss proper. You have these two snakes, and you have to hit these... Whoa. Okay, he wasn't being nice. You have to hit these red sections of them. Ah! Can't quite reach it. If you don't hit them in time, they kind of fire off a bunch of bullets at you. But yeah, you have to get three hits on each with these red squares. And then... After that, you beat the chapter. Alright, so there you go. That's chapter one. Uh, so, a bit of backstory. I started running this a few months ago. I had wanted to run it for a long time before that. But I never really got into it until my friend also did. Oh, I'm supposed to hold down right here. And so we set everything up. And originally we said, alright, you have to do the run single segment. Because... Certain things kind of act up if you go back to chapter select, this being one of them. Uh, there's these cutscenes that play in between the chapters. And there's not a whole lot going on, but they're pretty interesting to watch, to say the least. They're a little trippy. So originally we said, yeah, you have to watch all the cutscenes, you can't go back to chapter select, because it also gives you certain advantages. But it turns out, uh, after the leaderboard was created, this guy submitted a run from, like, a week after the game was released, back in 2016, <laughs> that did not do these things, and just went straight from chapter to chapter. And it's a pretty cool run, and we wanted to let it on, so we decided to change the rules. But, for the purposes of the marathon, I'm still going to show up in cutscenes. So we kind of follow this orb down. And here's part of the reason we didn't want to skip them initially. At least I didn't want to. So, this is a playable section. You have these 20, like, cubes that spawn. And I thought, well, okay, you have to collect them, and then you go to the next area. But it turns out the screen will always fade out at the exact same time, even if you don't collect any of these. So it was like, yeah, great. But it's still fun to mess around and collect them. Hmm. 
So now, yeah, as soon as this fades out, we'll be in chapter two. And things start to heat up a little bit. Now we have these kind of diamonds that will shoot at you. And if you hit them with your main body, you die. You have to take them out with your ghost. Which, it's a lot safer if you split up and do it that way. Oops, see, exactly. Exactly my point. I tried to run into one with my main body, which was not good. Alright. Because, yeah, if you run into them right, at their, right as they're shooting, you just die. And it's great. And also, when they're in the process of shooting, they kind of have very weird hitboxes, so sometimes you can just move right through them. Which is unfortunate, but you deal with it. And now we have these triangles. You, there's no way to defeat them or anything. Uh, so you just have to deal with these two. And whenever you get kind of close to them, they turn from circles to triangles and start chasing you around really quickly. It's actually really useful to have them stacked on top of each other like that, because they'll pretty much always stay like that. <laughs> now we have more of the same. Notice a similar theme here with the four corners of squares. But now we have a third one. A little extra thing to deal with. There we go. I'm gonna split up again. They'll track whichever body they're closest to. So obviously, oh no, I was going to say, obviously, if you get them tracking your ghosts, there's no way you can die, except I went to the top corner with my one body and one of them kind of noticed I was up there, so kind of followed me, but it's a danger you got to deal with. There we go. Perfect. There's a little trick to this level. You can see the dashed lines in a circle. Normally, if you enter that with your main body, uh, this thing in the middle will start spawning a really annoying stream of bullets. But if you don't enter it with your main body, if you just use your ghost to do that level, <clears throat> then bullets will never spawn and it makes it a hundred times easier. Alright, if this level is done right, it looks really cool. There's so many snipers. Alright, there we go. Alright, so what I do here, I return to level select, and then I go to the next level instead of... Not to the last one, thank you. Because normally, for some reason, in that level and only that level, there's like a 20 second thing that happens after you finish it. And it also causes some problems, which I will detail later down the road. So my strategy for this level, anyway, you see these two kind of snake things are following my main body, but I let my ghost body escape. So now I'm free to push this orb along without getting bothered by either of the snakes, if that makes sense. <laughs> makes that level pretty trivial, as long as you keep the two snakes focused on your main snake. <laughs> Oops. Alright. Now this level, you kind of have to be careful. This, this is what would happen in the earlier level, by the way, if you entered its radius. So we have more of the same enemy here. Ah! Okay, that was pretty close. Just requires a bit of focus, so I apologize. There we go. Should have it. Here's another example where you- Here is another example where you are forced to split up. you could say that. Your 
guard body, your main body. Um, actually, okay. The game itself in the tutorial does give the specific terms um, soft body, which I like to say main body instead. I don't know why. Just a preference thing. And ghost body for the. In this case, it's blue. You can see there's a lot of uh, different color palettes. Whenever you see this particular palette, that means you're probably in for a really bad time, because this is the worst, one of the hardest levels in Chapter 2. And it's reused later for, again, the worst level in Chapter 3. We'll see that later. Basically, you can see, you just have to do a bunch of phases of this. Wow, I've never seen this before. You have to do a bunch of phases of these walls and whenever you complete one phase, more walls appear. It's great. There we go. Alright, this level looks pretty... pretty cool, if I do say so. Basically, you line up pretty precisely so that you don't get hit by these rotating things. And then you can come up here with your ghost and do the same thing. And then you can start pushing the orb really, really early. It's super fun when you get it right. And it's frustrating if you don't. Like there, yeah. Now I have to wait for this line. Oh, and I messed it up again. So I had to wait for the line. And now I go down here with my main. And once again, you just line up in this square. And you'll never die. Unless you really mess up. But yeah, if you get the cycles just right, you can complete this level super fast. And it's very satisfying. I'm going to play it a little bit safe. There we go. And it takes forever for the line to finish catching up. There we go. So now we have the second boss, Triangle Prince. Let's pop the center there. And I kind of lure these first bullets. Actually, so one thing I'll point out. I'm going to attempt this once, like this. And you can see all the bullets are kind of staying on screen and not really going away and getting in my way a lot. Just generally being a pain. They're gonna stick around for quite a long time. Uh, okay, so if I get it first try, then I won't show off the thing that I was gonna do. Okay. So what I do, I go back to level select again. And go back to the same level. For some reason, when you've played from, like, an earlier point to this boss, the bullets just like to stay on screen for a million years, but... Now, we have pretty much a completely clear screen, and it's great. I don't know why that happens. But it makes this level a lot easier. And again, that's one of the reasons we instated the rule where you can't go back to chapter select. Aw, oh, man. But, now that we don't have that, that's perfectly valid. I'm just gonna focus on this a little bit. <laughs> See my uh, good buddy Umar in there. Calling me out. It's, per it's a perfectly legitimate strategy now. See? Alright, I'm going to play this a little bit safer than I was. Only a little bit. Ideally, you would lure this triangle, like, over to the left here. There we go. Alright, I really got to take care of this guy. Ah, okay. That was a little rough. But we made it through. Alright. And now we have another fairly long uh, cutscene sequence. So, I would like to just advertise for the rest of the stuff going on tonight, if that's alright. I noticed right after this run, there's a Fly Ranch run, and if you've never seen Fly Ranch, please do yourself a favor and watch that. It's such an impressive game. It's really difficult. I've not yet beaten it casually. I'm stuck in Mercury, like a lot of people are. 
but it's definitely worth a watch. After that is Marathon Infinity, uh, run by TBCR. <laughs> He's a cool guy. Um, Marathon's one of those like classic 2D PC sh uh, shooter games. Did I say 2D? It's like like Doom, where it's like 3D, but not really 3D. It's like early 3D, but it is a fun watch. Uh, and then the finale for tonight. Oh yeah, this is just another screen where it just fades out after a set amount of time. There's really nothing you can do. Except move around and have fun with the shadows. But yeah, the closer for tonight. Definitely also worth a watch. The mystery tournament. Who do we got? We got Pepsi, who is another pretty great Flyrench runner, by the way. We got Cinna, pretty decent friend of mine. Um, Zach SK, who is also a cool dude. I've seen him around. And we have the one and the only Dr. T-Chops himself. This, I don't know why I get such amusement out of this cutscene. It's just, the game kind of freaks out for no reason, but it is pretty great. <laughs> what what Dr. T-Chops? What value? Um I'd also just like to thank the dev of this game, uh Ziki Verant, if I am pronouncing that correctly. Uh he's a pretty awesome guy. When Umar and I started running this, we found a bunch of bugs and <laughs> took them to the Steam forums to report them. And we got a response back really quickly. And just indie game devs in general are pretty cool like that. Every game that I've, like, taken seriously as a speedrun has had just amazing support from the developers. Or developer, in this case, and many others. Alright. This level's actually a little bit rough. There we go. It's the last phase. If I can make this, there we go. That was cutting it a little close. So you can tell by that, Chapter 3 really ramps up the difficulty. And this is actually a new mechanic introduced here. These kind of square lines that you take out with your soft body. I'm not sure what the optimal like cycles and stuff here are. Because these lines always say, uh, start out at the same position. Stuff like that. Here we have more of the same. I actually did a little bit of work on this earlier just to see how quickly I can do this level. Because with the one line that's just bisecting the entire screen, it's really, really painful if you like miss a cycle, which I am going to now because I didn't do that uh, the way that I figured out you could do it. Ah, okay. But it's better than dying. Uh, yeah. So I have to come down here, wait for the whole thing to rotate. You know. <laughs> there we go. And now, we have some of these levels. Uh, this is a really frustrating one sometimes. Because these guys that just, like, move around and spawn bullets when you get close to them, that track you no less. They just kind of do whatever they want, and it's really annoying. Like, this one can just sit on the wall and shoot five times. There's no way you can get to the things you need to activate. It's really sad when that happens. Oops. So, my ghost got hit, and that's why it returned to me. There we go. Another new mechanic here. Oh. Shown in action. If you stay in these areas for too long that are denoted by the dashed lines uh you just die they flash and kill you oops all right i tried to be risky there 
It's these, this horizontal and vertical one that's the most painful because it flashes like really quickly. Now, good. If you do that fast enough, you can beat the turret that spawns. Once again, more of the same. Uh oh. So I missed a thing there, so I have to come back for it. Fortunately, those bullets despawn. What I do here is just kind of go around the outer edge first, and then deal with the middle stuff last. Ah, which maybe isn't the best strategy for that reason, but I will show off kind of the safe thing to do once I get there again. So just kind of wait, finish the edge. All right, so all you have to do, get the center squares done, I'll actually wait here for the turret, just play extra safe. And then you come around, you put yourself like right here, and you just use your ghost to do the rest of the level. So that even if you get hit or caught in these zones, you won't die. And there you go. And yeah, the turret's bullets can't go through walls, so you're pretty much guaranteed to be safe there. This is the worst level in the game. Again, because these guys just act totally randomly. And you can see, right now I don't have my ghost, so I have no way to kill them. Ugh. And if you get stuck on like these corners, there's homing bullets. So if you get stuck at all, you stop moving for a split second and you just get hit immediately. Which is also great. That actually went pretty well. But, fortunately, if you get to this phase, all you gotta do is just take out all these guys with your ghost, and then come down here with your ghost, and push the orb with your ghost, and you can just, like, hide in the corner with your soft body, and you're totally safe. Fortunately. So that very end of that level is not that bad. But that actually went very well, so I'm kind of impressed. So we just have a few levels left. And these snipers can just be a pain when you're trying to do the spirals. You can, like, move straight back into a bullet that you thought you had successfully avoided. Alright. Ah! And you want to be very careful not to go in the opposite direction of the spiral. I'm glad that they're all, uh, clockwise. Because having certain ones counterclockwise would be a very confusing mechanic. Alright, let's play that a little bit safe. I should not have said that. <laughs> okay. I love these spirals, I just wanted to show off more of them. Whoa. Alright. So we've got two. Yeah, if you uh, approach those right as they're shooting, again, you can just get hit immediately. It's very sad. <laughs> I'm glad you can appreciate my pain. Wow. There we go. I'm losing it. Alright. This time. This time we got it. I won't die at the very end. I'll do what I normally do and actually come over here and push this over. <laughs> Somehow I knew it would be this one. Don't worry. We'll get there. Alright. I've got like three of them on me. When you're really trying to go fast, basically, you just kind of hope you get lucky with the timing of the sniper, which is kind of unfortunate. Alright. Oof. Alright, 
we should be home free. <laughs> there we go. This is the second to last level, and this one's actually kind of unique. Uh, basically, the theme here is whenever you beat something, like, two more things appear. The level is constantly getting harder and harder. Ah, cut that really close. There we go. Let me come up here for the spiral. I'm just gonna wait for those to go. There we go. If you see me, like, sit in the middle of a spiral, if you've noticed, they spawn these guys that I just took out that, like, home in on you. So if you sit in the middle, they can't do that. So here's my strategy, again, for the last level. You just kind of take your main body and hide it in the corner. And you do everything with your ghost. And it's actually... Whoops. All right. We're improvising a little now. Ah. Okay. So the reason I came over here, instead of just staying in this corner, which I'm going to go back to, normally those big guys, two of them spawn during the level. And, like, 90% of the time, they'll show up on the right side. I kind of forgot about that. Like, this one showed up on the right side. I don't really know why they tend to be on this side, but... That's just what they do. Alright, so this is also bad. Let me go up here, maybe? Ah! Ah, okay. I knew I couldn't hold on to that one. So now I'll try hiding in this corner. See if that works better. <laughs> but yeah. Uh, these are totally random. And it's a little frustrating. But I've gotten way, way, way better at it than I used to be. This was like the level that kind of stopped me from learning the game for a while. But once you figure out, hey, just use your ghost for everything. It works a lot better. <laughs> Far less likely to die. But yeah, they just spawn in, in the background. So, when I'm trying to go really fast, I'll just get it down to a few enemies left, and then I'll go over here and deal with the big guys. But, I'm just gonna play it extra safe. Finish that, and I'm coming up on time. That's it. Oh, so that's soft, buddy. That's soft game, at least. I uh, haven't really focused too much on hard game. I'm a little scared of it, to be honest. It's pretty difficult, but as soon as you get the idea of like controlling both of these at the same time, focusing on each independently, You kind of get the hang of it. It becomes more natural. So yeah, again, thanks to Mr. Veron for making the game. You can kind of see some cool people in the credits. <laughs> yeah, some of the colors... useful. See what name names you can recognize. I see Terry Cap. There's Bennett Foddy. I've been thinking about Daniel Brown. A relative. Mom and dad. Always appreciate that. <laughs> it's a bunch of play testers. 